Hi everyone, it's Friday evening. It's October 11th, 2019, and I hope everyone had a beautiful day in the Lord. I have some devotions for you today, but first, as always, I like to say the Our Father, so please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Okay, this is called Blind Ambition. And the reading is from Proverbs 18, 12, and it says, Before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty, and before honor, it's humility. Blind ambition, success at all costs, becoming a legend in one's own time, climbing the ladder to the top, king of the mountain, top of the heap, I did it my way. We make heroes out of people who are ambitious. We hold them up as models for our kids and put their pictures on covers of our magazines. And rightly so, this world would be in sad shape without people who dream of touching the heavens. Ambition is that grit in the soul which creates disenchantment with the ordinary and puts a, the dare into dreams. But left unchecked, it becomes an insatiable addiction to power and prestige, a roaring hunger for achievements that devours people as a lion devours an animal, leaving behind only the skeletal remains of relationships. God won't tolerate it. Blind ambition is a giant step away from God and one step closer to catastrophe. And we see that with these watchmen. I noticed today that several people were reporting fake news on uh, United States bombing, uh, Turkey bombing U.S. soldiers in Syria. And this is absolutely false, fake news. And it didn't happen to one watchman. It was, a, a, I noticed, two or three. And, and at the core of the, this very, very critical mistake is the fact that they are overambitious. And they put their ambition and success on these YouTube channels before their intention to vet the information. Because everybody wants to be first first with the breaking news first uh, to get all the, the, the people watching them um, and constantly be in the public eye. This is such a focus on self and money. And when you see within minutes there are hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people posting and watching, you say to yourself, what are these people doing with their lives? They're certainly not reading the Bible. They're just waiting for these, their idols to come on here and report. Thinking that they have something that the news doesn't have. God won't tolerate it. Blind ambition is a giant step away from God and one step closer to catastrophe. Next one is called Two Sisters, and the reading is from Romans 5.1, and it says, Since we have been made right with God by our faith, we have peace with God. Pride and shame, you'd never know they're sisters. They appear to be so different, but pride puffs out her chest, and shame hangs her head. Pride boasts, and shame hides. Pride seeks to be seen and shame seeks to be avoided. But don't be fooled. The emotions have the same parentage 
and the emotions have the same impact. They keep you from your father. Pride says, you're too good for him. And shame says, you're too bad for him. Pride drives you away and shame keeps you away. If pride is what goes before a fall, then shame is what keeps you from getting up after one. Very powerful. And this one is called The Greenhouse of the Heart. And the reading is from Galatians 6-7. It says, people harvest only what they plant. Think for a moment. Think for a moment of your heart as a greenhouse. And your heart, like a greenhouse, has to be managed. Okay, consider for a moment your thoughts, if your thoughts were a seed, okay? All the thoughts that go through your mind. Consider each thought as a seed. And some thoughts that flow through your mind become flowers. And others become weeds. Sow seeds of hope and enjoy your optimism. Sow seeds of doubt and expect insecurity. You getting this? The proof is everywhere you look. Ever wonder why some people have the Teflon capacity to resist negativism and remain patient, optimistic, and forgiving? Could it be that they have diligently sown seeds of goodness and are enjoying the harvest? Ever wonder why others have such a sour outlook, such a gloomy attitude? You would too if your heart were a greenhouse of weeds and thorns. And you see, the more you read your Bible, the more you pray, the closer your relationship is with the Lord, the Lord cleanses your mind. You don't have racing thoughts anymore. You don't have um, thoughts just coming out of nowhere and permeating your mind. The Lord puts up a barrier and gives you the power through the ministry of the Holy Spirit to resist whatever thought comes knocking at the... Uh, I'll just say, you know, it's cliche, the windmills of your mind, right? That you have the ability now to say no to the thought. See, you're not responsible for the first thought. Okay, because thoughts can enter your mind separate from you. You didn't put it there. Okay, but if you embrace that thought, if it's a bad thought, it starts to take root like the seeds we just talked about in the greenhouse, okay? And if that isn't a positive seed or a seed from God, it will start to, to grow a root in you. And this is why people say all the time that they, they claim they are saved, they claim they're a child of God, but they're ravaged in their minds. Their mind is a bee's nest of cacophony, swarms of bees buzzing and humming and whispering into this ear and that ear. And, and they listen to the thoughts and run this way and run that way, all just listening to the thoughts instead of being peaceful and calm and listening to God what God has to say. When you set your mind on things above, you become very, very sensitive to anything that comes at you that isn't from above. And then you begin to set boundaries and you don't let anything in. Listen, you have a free will, people. Everyone has a free will. 
If I get a lustful thought that enters my mind, I just say no. I go like that and it blows right out. I don't give it any power, see? But if I started to say to myself, wow, that that's an interesting scenario, you know? And now all of a sudden, if I think on it, the fantasy starts to advance. And before you know it, that moving picture in my mind is creating a feeling in my body. And that's a place you don't want to go. People say they can't thwart that. I say you can. The Lord says you can. I used to have that big time when I was younger. I don't have that anymore. That was part of my testimony. I don't have any of those thoughts. No ravaging thoughts, no thoughts of anger. I won't permit those thoughts to take root in my vessel because I protect the peace that the Father gave me like I was a newborn infant. Okay? That's how you have to protect your mind. There are so many assaults that come from everywhere. Just go out, go to the convenience store, get a cup of coffee, and you'll be assaulted several times from people that you run into in the street, an aggressive driver, stepping in something that someone else didn't pick up, hearing some uh, abusive language from one person to another, and you want to react, it, it just, it's everywhere. But you have, if you have God and you're a child of God, you have the power to say no. You have to exercise your no muscle. And on that note, I want to wish you all a beautiful evening in the Lord. As always, I want to remind you that I love you and Jesus loves you. Never forget how much Jesus loves you. He loves you very, very much. And he's coming very, very soon, people. I don't want you to give up hope, okay? I want you to keep looking up and set your mind on things above, okay? Don't think of what's going to come out of the pit. Don't think of the Antichrist, okay? Think of our new home in heaven and all of the things that the Father promised us. And the wonder and the reception that's waiting for us. Wow, I can't wait for that. I'm sure if you're a child of God, this world hates you. And to go and walk into that realm where everybody loves you and is waiting for you and cheering for you, you made it. That's going to be some event. And that's something I want to be thinking about. Okay? And on that note, I'll say God bless you in Jesus' holy, holy name. And have a beautiful day.